Retool is the fast way to build internal tools. You can use it to connect pre-built, drag-and-drop front-end components, like tables, buttons, and forms, to custom back-end functions, like SQL queries and API requests. Retool automatically takes care of overhead logic, such as triggers and security, while leaving flexibility to make things custom, so you can focus on what really makes your internal tool unique. In this tutorial, you'll learn how Retool works and create your first internal tool from scratch. Home screen walkthrough. This is your home screen. Let's briefly look at what's here. The Apps tab is where you can view, organize, and create your Retool apps. In the left panel, you can view and reorganize your apps by Retool's default categories or by your own folders. When you want to create a new app, you can choose to start from scratch with a blank canvas, use a Retool template, have Retool intelligently generate apps from your data, or import an app you've previously made in Retool. The Query Library tab is where you can search, view, and edit any queries you or your team have made, as well as write new ones. The Resources tab is where you can view, add, or delete data sources, like a database or API, to be used in Retool. For detailed instructions on how to add specific resources, check out the Retool docs. If you ever need help, the Retool team is just a click away through the intercom widget. Let's start building our first app. Say we're an e-commerce startup and need a Retool app to work with our user data. Our support team needs to look at customer details, check their orders, and mark certain orders as gifts in our system. Here's the app as it'll actually look and work like by the end. Let's start building this app in the App Editor. From the Retool homepage, click Create New, and then Create a Blank App. App Editor UI Overview Let's take a look at what's in the App Editor. The Production and Staging buttons allow you to choose whether you want your app, while you're building it, to use data from a production database or data from a staging database. You can choose whether a database is for production or for staging when setting up a resource. In the center, you have your canvas, where you'll drag and drop the front-end elements for your app. In the right panel, you have access to a large selection of components, such as tables, buttons, and forms. You can also use the inspector to modify an existing component by clicking on the component. In the bottom panel, you have your query editor, where you can view, edit, and add new queries to fetch or modify your data. You also have your transformer editor, which lets you transform your query's results with JavaScript. In the left panel, you can view the state of your app, including what and how components, queries, or constants are being used. You can hide any of these panels at any time using these three buttons. Displaying data in a table. Let's add a table to display data about our customers. First, we need to write a query to fetch a list of customers. Select New and name the query. Then choose the resource you'd like to use. For this example, we'll use one of the onboarding Postgres databases. Type in the query and click the Play icon to preview the data. This looks good, so click Save. Next, to display the data from this query, click and drag the table component from the right panel to the center canvas. Retool automatically prefills the table with data from your last saved query. Note how Retool references the data by using the query name .data. Let's also add a title for this table. Drag a text component from the right panel onto the center canvas and change the value. Text components can render as either Markdown or HTML, so we can quickly add some basic formatting. Adding a search input. Let's add a text input component to this table so we can filter the data by a customer's first name. Drag a text input component from the right panel to the center canvas. Change the label name so the input's purpose is easy to understand. All components have a value property, and a text input component's value is whatever is typed into it. Currently, the table is displaying data from our customer's query. We can modify it to filter by our text input's value by adding a WHERE clause to the query, 
and referencing the value of our text input. Not text input one dot value also ensures that the table displays all customers if there is nothing in the text input. Because everything inside of double curly braces evaluates to JavaScript, we can add some wildcards with concatenation to improve the search experience. Now we can type part of a word and still get back useful results. Referencing data from another component. This first table we've created displays data about our customers, but what if we want a second table to display the selected customer's orders? We can do that easily with another query that uses the first table's selected row property. In the bottom panel, click New to create a new query. Name it, and choose a resource, which in this case is the same as for the first table, the read-only onboarding Postgres database. We'll write a query that filters for orders with the same user ID as the first table's selected row. Now that we have this new query, let's add a second table component to display its data. Drag a table component from the right panel to the center canvas, and Retool will automatically pre-fill the data. These orders aren't sorted, so let's modify the query to also order by ID. To make the table easier to read, let's display the selected customer's name above our new table. Drag a text component from the right panel to the center canvas, and reference the first name property of the selected row from the first table. The text component will now update when we click on a different customer. Writing data with an API and with SQL. Something you can do in Retool that you can't in many other BI or low-code tools is write data back to your database. Let's do that by marking an order as a gift with an API request and with SQL. To write data with an API request, set up an API endpoint. For this example, we've already set up an orders endpoint. In the bottom panel, click New to create a new query. Name the query and select the resource, which in this case is the onboarding API. Set the action type to put, and our orders endpoint requires we pass along the order ID. Edit the parameters, headers, and body as required. To mark the gift property, we'll type that in for the key and set the value to true. We also want the data in the second table to refresh after the query runs so that we can see the effect of our API call. Scroll to the bottom of the panel and select the orders query to rerun after the mark gifts query runs successfully. To allow the user to trigger this query with a button, Drag a button component from the right panel onto the center canvas. Give it the label mark as gift. And choose the mark gifts query to run on click. Let's test our new button. As you can see, the gift field changes when we click mark as gift. Let's repeat what we just did, only instead of using an API request, we'll use SQL. In the bottom panel, click New to create a new query. Name the query and select the resource, which in this case is the editable onboarding Postgres database. Since we want to update a property of an order, select the Orders table. For action type, choose Update an existing record. We'll filter by order ID using the same value we used for the API request. Enter the change set as gift and true. As before, have the orders query rerun after the mark gifts query runs successfully. We'll configure the button exactly as we did for an API request.
Once again, you can see that the gift field changes when we click Mark as Gift. Creating and using a JSON schema form. We've now created two tables, one which fetches and displays data about our customers, and one which displays data about the orders for a selected customer. What if we wanted to add a new order to a customer's existing orders? We can do that with a form. Retool has two types of forms. A simple form is just a container with a submit button. You choose which form fields you want, such as text inputs, dropdowns, or checkboxes, and then connect the submit button to a custom query. A JSON schema form is a form which auto-generates from your database schema, which can save you time if you're using it to add a row to your database. For this example, we want to add an order to our database, so we'll use the JSON schema form. Drag a JSON schema form component from the right panel to the center canvas. Click Generate Schema from a Database, and choose the Resource and Table, in this case, the Orders. Click Use Generated Schema. After creating our form, we need to create a query to run upon Form Submit. In the bottom panel, click New to create a new query. Name it and select the editable onboarding Postgres database resource. Select the orders table, set the action type to insert a record, and add each of the form fields to the change set. Be sure to have the orders query rerun after this query runs successfully. In the right panel, under the option On Form Submit, select the Schema Form query you just created. Now, we can easily add a new order to our user. Here's the new row that we just added through our form. Sharing your app. When you've finished making edits to your app, you can share it with others by clicking on the share button in the top right hand corner. Here, you can invite teammates to edit the app, view the app, or create a public link so anyone, including non-teammates, can view the app. If you want to export the app as a JSON file so you can import it again later into Retool, or so you can send it to someone else to import into Retool, click on the three dots in the top right-hand corner, and then Export and Download. To experience the app as a user would, click on the Play button in the top right-hand corner. This is user mode, and it shows you what the app will look like to someone using it to do their own job, such as someone on your operations or support teams.